Greetings folks, in this video I'll be showing you the Detrim Z3 FPV Autopilot with OSD, GPS, power management unit and 3-in-1 setup card. There is another Detrim Autopilot out there called the Z3 Lite. This is the newer and uh, upgraded version of that which includes the voltage and current sensing and OSD. Very exciting. So this is a GPS autopilot that you don't need to connect to a computer to set up. It comes with a setup card. All the setup for the autopilot is done via this 3-in-1 setup card. This card can also be used for programming uh, Skylord ESCs and the gyro stabilized Detrim uh, receivers. It's not really a card, it's actually a little hand-held unit with a screen and uh, little screen and uh, buttons and connection there. Also can be used as uh, a battery checker. Uh, as I said, programming ESCs. There's the ESC uh, plug there. Comes with the cable. There's the unit. Instruction manuals there. Power management unit, which is also a voltage and current sensor. And in the autopilot box, we get the little uh, Z3 or Z3 if you're in the US. FPV autopilot, GPS unit, connection cables, instruction manual and some double-sided foam tape. At this early stage uh, I think the manual has been updated so the latest version of the manual can be downloaded from the uh, Dynam website which will be linked in the description of course. A nicely detailed instruction manu manual. So I'll have a closer look at all of this, show you how to use it, how to set it up and then we'll put it on the Cessna C188 and take it out for some FPV expeditions. I'll just uh, look at the instruction manual. It is very, very small writing, so I've had to put it onto my iPad, iPad and uh, enlarge it. <laughs> the unit can be mounted any way you want, right side up, upside down, left side or, or right side. You can set all of that up with the three-in-one controller. You can use PPM, SBUS or DSM receivers, so that's, uh, can't use normal PWM receivers, so it does have to be a, a serial protocol receiver. When you do use Detrim's 9-channel receiver and using PPM connection, it can support data return functions, so that will send uh, data back to your uh, Gavin transmitter and display information on the screen and give you uh, audio prompts as well can also handle uh, normal type planes, flying wings and VTAIL aeroplanes as usual. Now the modes, we have a gyro off mode which is totally manual, we have a normal mode which is nicely stabilised against outside influences like wind gusts. We have a safe mode which is self levelling, recovery mode. We have an aerobatic mode which is like a, an attitude hold, so you can fly inverted easily, fly knife edges easily. And it has a return to home mode as well, where it'll fly back to you and circle above your head. It also has a loss of signal return to home function, where it'll fly back to you at a height of 100 metres and circle around your head at uh, a radius of 50 metres, which is one of the most important functions to have in a flight controller. So this is the Z3 Autopilot FPV. Let's have a look at the inputs. We have PPM there for PPM style receivers, S bus. Airspeed is uh, under development, I believe. That'll be an airspeed sensor, not available just yet. Voltage and current comes from the power management unit. GRT is data back. Uh, so with Detrim receivers and transmitters, you can get data going back to the transmitter. And GPS plugs in there. On the other side, we have... Uh, first four outputs are your control sticks. So that's... Uh, Aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Then you and this is the uh, video in, video out for your OSD, which is a great feature. And what they're calling the power management unit or the voltage and current sensor and voltage regulator. They're just XT60 in and out. 2S to 6S. And the connection that goes to the Z3 unit, that is uh, 5 volts to power the unit, nice regulated clean 5 volts, and the voltage and current sensing. 
GPS unit again has the uh, six pin plug plugs into the board in the GPS spot and here's the programming card uh, we need to power that from a battery or from the connected up Z3 unit so let's do that now let's connect it all up all right let's start off let's check that the battery actually does have enough power we've got individual cells here and total cell voltage there that's great so let's connect things up now it's it's a bit hard to see but there's a tiny little triangle there which is the ground pin and we can see here ground pin is the outer one so gps goes in that way and the power management unit same thing there's a little triangle just there which is the ground now i can plug the s bus from a receiver in into the s bus slot there and now the camera uh, so this is video in from the camera and video out to the transmitter the the board supplies five volts to the camera and nothing to the video transmitter so you need to power the video transmitter externally I'm going to power both externally actually the camera and the video transmitter so all I really need is the signal from the camera there signal going out the video transmitter there and possibly a ground wire here too that's the way I'm going to wire it up anyway so the camera and transmitter so there's the cable for the camera going in there and the cable going out to the video transmitter going there no power going through there that just goes straight through from my lipo balance port all right so that's connected and we'd put the servos all in here we'll do that later on i'll just um, fire it up and see how we're working so my receiver is bound i have a model set up in the transmitter uh, and now we can plug in the lipo into the power management unit so I have my LiPo plugged into the power ma management unit which is powering the board and the receiver and the no I'm not powering that yet I need to plug my video transmitter into the balance port so now we have video transmitter we have the screen there but we don't have any OSD at the moment so let's uh, arm the board see that turns green show it shows the board is armed and I think we may need to reboot telemetry lost telemetry recovered there we go now we're getting the uh, OSD on the screen So on the OSD we have satellites up here, latitude and longitude. We have the accelerometer, barometer there, number of satellites there, distance. Uh, these are angles, what are these? There's altitude here and a bit of a variograph. Uh, horizon, speed, battery voltage, current. It's telling me low satellites. Throttle percentage is at two. Drop that down. Fly time down there. Really nice OSD and the mode shows up over here so that's gyro mode stabilize mode and that's gyro off return to home doesn't work yet you need to be flying for that to show looking at the led here we're in manual mode or gyro off is green light gyro mode is blue light and uh, stabilize is blue green light and return to home when it works will be a yellow light now let's have a look at what the 3-in-1 programming card does. We'll plug that into the Z3 unit. We need to have a battery plugged in there, so green light is on there. And you can see we can switch down between all the different options. Fly mode, this determines the mapping of the switch positions. Uh, if you, you can see you can choose whatever you want. Yeah, you can choose acro mode. That's... Um, not a default setup setting. Uh, instead of, say, safe mode, you can have acro mode if you want to. We can change the gains, which is great. Back out of there, roll gain, pitch gain, 
roll offset, you can uh, sort of fine tune the alignment of your board if your plane's rolling or, or dipping when you go to stabilize mode. Uh, change the direction of mounting of the board. You can mount the board upside down, right side, left side. Mine will be up the right way. Wing type, normal, delta, v-tail. We are normal. Cruise velocity, loiter radius, throttle, throttle direction normal, and you can set limits there. What are the choices? Normal or reverse? Well, you don't want to reverse. And DSM bind, so that's uh, spectrum binding. And then back to the start. So that's all the setup done in the uh, card. We can take this out into the field and adjust the gains if you want to, if the stabilisation is too aggressive or, or not enough. Now the setup on the radio. With all flight control boards, you start just with a normal setup for a plane. Uh, like that, probably 100% aileron, 100% elevator, 100% throttle, 100% rudder on 1234. Uh, we have a mode switch and the return to home switch there. I think I flew the plane recently in just uh, without any flight controller, and these were the um, rates that I worked out. So I'll see how that goes uh, with the flight control board on. Setting up fail safe. Um, I think in the manual it says the board can detect when there are no uh, signals coming from the plane, which is uh, beyond range or a failed uh, receiver or something like that. No pulses on the Tyrannus should trigger that correctly. Uh, I think on the other radios or the DSM it may need to be a custom, custom failsafe where you set up the mode switch in the return to home position. So uh, channel 6 is the mode switch there, you can see it's switching. Switch it into the return to home position, go down to channel 6, push and hold, and choose channel fail safe. And that will, with that solid bar there, sets the channel 6 into the return to home position in a fail safe situation. And that's what you want. You don't want to set any of the other ones because uh, the board should take control of all of them. Just the return to home switch in the right position. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure no pulses will be the right one for us. It's all mounted up in the ag wagon now. I have the GPS under the canopy there. I have the receiver there, antennas down there, camera, camera on the hatch. The Z3 is mounted in here on a little pedestal. Power unit down here, it's a bit messy. I can tidy that up a bit more. Now the very important thing to do is to make sure the control surfaces are moving in the correct direction and the stabilisation is working in the correct direction and there's a bit of a routine to doing that. Uh, first off in your transmitter you make up your model, you make sure that when you push the sticks up and to the right on the channel display the graph goes to the right as well and then in manual mode or gyro off mode you look at the direction that the control surfaces move when you twiddle the sticks if they're reversed then you use the three-way control card plugged into the Z3 and reverse the direction using the card rather than on your transmitter that'll get the control surfaces working in the correct direction and the stabilization in the correct direction as well and we also need to do a level calibration and uh, to do this power up the plane then power up the transmitter and hold the plane at the attitude that it's going to fly uh, and with this plane it, it, you'll need to sort of jack up the tail a bit not so that it's absolutely level but so that the the nose is just a little bit up because that's how it actually flies through the air and once the green light stops flashing and goes red, you should be calibrated. If you have to redo that in the field, uh, you can do the same thing, prop it up in the attitude that you want it to fly, flick the mode switch six times rapidly and it'll do the same thing.